are you doing today? I'm doing great, Janice. Thanks for asking. Very good. I just had to close out a window there so we could get started. Um, welcome back to Outside the Box Healthcare Edition. And I'm here every Wednesday with Dr. John Roswell. And it's FNP, right? FNP, Family, Family Nurse Practitioner. So, okay. or, yep. Very nice. We've only been doing this for what? Three, four months now, and I'm, I think I've, I'm learning the, I think, not really. Okay, I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying, I'm trying, so I get points for that. Yeah, I think people with advanced degrees like all those different uh, acronyms or letters after their name, and it's, uh, I think it's quite confusing, actually, for the community. It drives me absolutely insane, but I'm Dr. John, APRN or Advanced Practice Registered Nurse, Family Nurse Practitioner, whatever you want to call me, just call me something nice. And, and I always do. I always yes. do call you something nice. So just for those who maybe this is the only time they've been here or it's the first time, I just want to explain something and thank you too, because Dr. Rothwell is my personal primary care physician and he is kind enough to spend a little bit of time with me every Wednesday um, or every Wednesday that something doesn't come up and happen that stops us to talk about various healthcare related um, issues. And we've really been consumed mainly with COVID related issues. And I was thinking about it this morning and I thought, you know, I'm kind of tired of talking about COVID, but even though it's like the thing, it is, you know, we all think about it all the time, even if we don't want to. And this is kind of related. So the thing that we want to talk about today it's kind of related because it certainly contributes, but it's stress mm. and, and how, to, how, how that's happening right now. And I think a lot, maybe all of us are stressed. And here's something that's really interesting. So I feel really stressed today, but it's weird because my brain isn't really portraying that in the normal way. Like the way I would normally say, ooh, I feel a little stressed today but my body is like my stomach hurts and you know, my heart's a little racy and I can just tell them, I just feel a little bit edgy mm -hmm. and I'm certain that it's stress. There's, there are a lot of reasons to be stressed. We all are stressed if for something right now. Are you seeing a lot of that in your patients, stressy stuff? Oh yeah, absolutely. And, um, and, and just to kind of take one step back uh, just for those medical professionals out there. So, I'm your advanced care provider. I'm not a physician, so I'm not a medical doctor or doctor of osteopathic medicine. And it just just clarify that because you know um, it, you know, identifying and really describing who you are and what you do is important for the community, so they kind of understand. So, uh, but yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, COVID has consumed so much of our time every day, all day. And, and it's interesting because uh, recently there was a local magazine saying, hey, John, will you write an opinion piece for us? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Maybe I should get some help from Janice. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, I'm in it. I'm right. in it. So, in oh, it. It's, it's due tomorrow morning, you know. Oh, up. no. So, <laughs> but um, so I, I said, sure, what would you like me to write about? And she goes, whatever, just not COVID. And, and, and so I'm like, I'm struggling. I'm like, well, what am I going to write about? And uh, because realistically is, is COVID or not COVID, it's part of our, our daily life right now. And, and so well, everything's think, different. Everything's different. Sure. And so when, when you talk stress, um, I love it from the perspective of this is, this is my wheelhouse, right? I talk about my five pillars of wellness quite frequently. And so what is stress? How is stress manifested? How can we deal with stress? And, you know, what are some ways that we can actually either manage or cope or treat? What is the root cause of this stress that's going on? And so everyone has, has some stress or our body um, makes chemicals that causes natural stress that is healthy. Um, Sometimes we may refer to this as the fight or flight response. And this is a protective mechanism or, you know, a, a natural phenomenon that the body gives you a surge of an adrenaline 
because someone's attacking you or you need extra strength or you need these kind of things. And so that's a stress. And then what happens when you have these stressors and then they're constant and it's that constant release of chemicals in our body that eventually can wear, can wear us out. You know, how long can we stay operating with that kind of stress? If you think about as an, as a business owner and right now times are tough, you know, and we got to, we, you know, we don't have a lot of employees, if any, and we're out there marketing and we're doing the financial side and we're doing the operations side. And so when, if I have a day that is just loaded with patients where every hour is taken with a patient, because I only see one patient an hour. So it's only eight. So that's not a lot, but my day is full, which yeah. means after my eight hours of work, then I have to do the marketing piece and I got to do the finance piece and I got to do that. So now I have a 12, 15, 18 hour day. And for how long can we do that? That puts stress on the body that comes out physical. It comes out mental. It comes out emotional, right? It can come out spiritually, right? And then it comes out financially. And so it stress is a huge, uh, has a huge impact on those five pillars of wellness that I so routinely talk about. Well, here's the thing. Okay, so there's two things that I thought about. One, like I, it doesn't matter, you know, business owners, obviously, you know, we're stressed because all of the uncertainty and, you know, just all the things that you just said, which by the way, I have very affordable outsourcing services, <laughs> um, just saying, so, but all of the things that, you know, everybody's taking on, um, ironically, I made a post about that on my Facebook page this morning, talking about how are you reassessing and how are you doing things different? Because I'm doing things different from my own business even than I ever did. But people who are not business owners, like I have friends who are teachers, um, who are administrators, um, who are executive assistants, um, these are just some of the people who come to mind off the bat that I know for a fact whose the way that their job works has changed dramatically. So like almost overnight, everything changed, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, most of us don't deal with change all that well. I like change, but I don't like it put on me. I like to choose it. And so, you know, when change is forced on you, that's stressful in and of itself. So now the thing that for a lot of people was the one constant, their work, there was, that was a constant. So if there were problems at home or, you know, maybe the kids were challenging or the spouse or lack thereof, or, you know, whatever, um, work was what work was and now it isn't. And then on top of that, bear with me here, on top of that, the things we used to do as stress relievers are not necessarily available. So like here on the Space Coast, um, it's very common to go out and listen to some live music and have a drink and you can't do that. Go to a concert, you know, you can't do that. And so what do you do? And I catch myself sitting in my house going, I'm going to go do something. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not okay, I could go do this. Oh, that's a bad idea. And so, you know, I just, it's like this vicious, vicious cycle. And how do you get off that? How do you get off that hamster wheel? Wow. There, you, yeah. There's a lot, there's a lot into that, right? I know. I know. I think that the only change we really like is the change we can control. Yeah. And, and so, um, in, in the current climate, we can't control the change no. and we can't um, control social media and we can't control the information that's being disseminated out to the community. And so there's very, very little we can control and this puts stress on us. And, and so what I'd like to say is, uh, well, then you know, control what you can control and what you can control is your response. You can control how you respond. And so it was interesting. But can I, you? 
Sure. I'm going to challenge that. Can you, I mean, when it reaches a point, can you, like when it, it becomes physical, your stomach hurts, your head hurts, you know, you, that, that physical response starts happening, you know, how do you control that? So when you're, yeah, you're hangry. Oh, eat something. <laughs> eat something. <laughs> See, I thought it meant I needed to have a rum and Coke or something. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, hey, not, that's not that, the that's one. Not, that's, that's not, not it. it. That's yeah. not it. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Sure, you Fair could, enough. depending on the time of day, I guess. But, you know, I mean, everybody's a little different to each their own. And I'm yeah. not the judge. I'm uh, not a big drinker. It was a joke. <laughs> kind of. Kind of. <laughs> hey, you're a pirate. I get it. You're not a drinker. Yeah. You're a pirate. Yeah. There you um, go. You, you know, so, you know, I'm a glass is always half full or more than full kind of person. And right. um, I, I was talking to a patient before we got on today about the same thing. And my spouse is, she is, you know, more, um, you know, the glass is half empty. You know, so we balance each other out. And I'm like, well, cool, honey, because if you put us together, we have a full cup, right? There you go. And, and she's like, oh, very funny, right? Because to her, she doesn't get that. But I do. Um, but it's it's the response. And, and I think, you know, you can control your response because you know that if I get stressed and my stomach starts, I don't eat. Or, or if I get stressed, I eat the wrong things. I'm a stress eater. I hear this, I hear this a lot right now. It's like, I'm just really stressed. I've gained 10 pounds. I'm a stress eater and stuff like that. It's like, okay, well, you chose, you made a choice when you went to the grocery store to buy the food that you put in your cupboard now that you are now eating yeah. That is unhealthy. Um, I can stress eat too, but what do I choose to have in my refrigerator? So I have raw nuts. Okay. I have fruits. I have vegetables. I have lots of fruit. I have grapefruit. I have bananas. I have pears. I have peaches. I have grapes. I have cherries. I have blueberries, blackberries, and raspberries. I mean, all of these are in my fridge right now. And so some of them I have in the freezer. Some of them I don't. And so whenever I'm hungry or hangry, and I find myself reaching for something, um, I, the, the only option I have is for something healthy. Right. right? Because I yeah. chose to put that in there. So, you know, you have a choice. Um, it doesn't mean that the choice isn't hard, right? And, and, you know, there's a lot of things in life that are very simple, but they're not easy. And if you catch this, there's a lot of things that are simple, but they're not easy. And so, and so we struggle with that. And that of course adds, adds additional stress to us. Um, you know, stress manifests itself in so, so many different ways. Um, the key is, is what tools are you going to choose to use when you recognize that you have stress coming on? So if it is a physical stress, for some people, it's working out. Um, and like you said, right now, you can't go to the gym or, you know, you're limited to gym or Pilates or yoga, but you can walk, right? So you make yeah. a choice. You know what? I could sit at home and do nothing, or I can go walk outside. I can go take a walk on the beach. I can go for a bike ride. I can go, you know, I can drive an hour away and there's all these springs and trails and stuff in central Florida that, you know, we are, don't typically go to the coast, you know, central Florida because we live on the coast, but those are options are there. That's a choice that you make, um, you know, when it comes to mental health and we talk about stressors like, okay, well, you know, uh, do you look at opportunities to read about different tools that can be utilized to improve mental health? A uh, yoga, meditation, um, uh, journaling, prayer. There's uh, so many different things that you can do from a mental health perspective, but a lot of people don't want, you know, they don't want to uh, because they don't want to admit that they're mentally having a hard time dealing with what's going on. But in reality is, is whether you're having a hard time or not mentally, you're still dealing with it. And then what happens is then you have an emotional response. And I think that we could all agree that if you have not managed your mental and your physical aspect and your spiritual aspect of your stress response, you will respond emotionally. 
Yes, I agree with that 100%. And so when you respond emotionally, um, sometimes we say things that we don't mean. Um, and, and, and we really, you know, we're nice people would kind. So, you know, what I, I am currently right now, just kind of just, just really writing out of what do we believe at Island Direct Primary Care? And of course, you know where I sit spiritually. So faith is important to me. Um, but loving my neighbor is so, so important to me, um, you know, so my community. And, and so what I think about is like, like, well, then how am I going to respond to my community when I have a patient who I spend hours, hours with during the week and they don't adhere to a plan that we've had shared decision making on? And it becomes frustrating. And so when I get an email from them about different things, sometimes I have to let that sit for 24 hours before I respond. So I'm not responding emotionally. Um, yeah. because That's always know, a good policy, I think. Yeah. yeah. And so, and so um, same thing with my spouse, you know, something can pop up um, and, and I'll want to say, you know, um, if I respond to this question right now, I'm afraid I'm going to respond with emotion and not really have a, a conversation that's productive. And, and these are, you know, it's like, well, I can't say that to my significant others. Like, why not? You're yeah. in a relationship. It's a relationship. You should be able to, I mean, communication is such a easy, simple, not easy, simple thing. That's not easy. Simple, not easy, but yeah. critical. So important. But I agree hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so, so it all affects and it adds stressors. And then, you know, there's a, when I was talking to my patient this morning about stress, so you have this involuntary um, physical response where your body has a surge of adrenaline, whether you like it or not. Um, yeah. and, and, and so it's, it's kind of like uh, being a teenage boy, so to speak. It's like you see a beautiful girl and then your body responds and you have no, no control over it your actual response from certain perspectives, but you do have control over other responses. In other words, you don't have control of what happened to you physically, but you have a control of what you do physically. Right. And, and so it's a, uh, it's an inter interesting natural phenomenon that the body has. And, you know, we can get into the medical terminology at a different time. So. <laughs> well, I did not have a time. Well, I didn't make time to take a walk this morning. I shouldn't say I didn't have time because that's cop out. I didn't make time to take a walk this morning. But when I got to the office and I was feeling really stressy, I did turn on some meditation music while nice. I was, you know, getting set up. And yeah, so that's kind of my go to. So um so I'm trying. I'm yeah. I'm trying. I love it. So I use um I haven't used Apple music, but I use Pandora. And so I, you can search Zen or meditation music and you can different things. Um, so you have resources for you. You know, it's interesting. I've been more disciplined in some of my routines since I started Island Direct Primary Care, predominantly because I don't want to lose focus of my mission and, and what my purpose is. But at the same time, I know that I can't serve others unless I serve myself too. And I focus on those five pillars of wellness for me. And so I, I don't do a great job at all five of them, but I do a pretty good job at three out of the five, four out of the five. Um, physical health is probably the biggest challenge and I'm talking about increased movement or for lack of better words, exercise. Um, that's probably my greatest thing. But if I don't do my routine, like your walk this morning, um, if I don't do my daily devotionals first thing in the morning, um, then my day is a little off kilter. And if I don't take a moment, five minutes or 15 minutes to put myself mentally, emotionally, and spiritually back on track, the rest of my physical day is um, sometimes is a struggle and a struggle that doesn't need to be. I don't have the right That's mindset. Interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. I, um, you know, and I've read that before that it's important to have, you know, good routines and routines that serve you. One of the things that I started doing a few months ago, actually, and I really like it is um, I don't do it every night, but a lot of times I listen to um, guided meditations while I sleep. 
-hmm. And, you know, so they'll start out with a little guided meditation, help me relax and go to sleep. And then it's usually subliminal because I like that. I don't really like hearing the words during the night because if I wake up during the night, which I do I, um, like every night I did last night and I was listening to one that was actual words and um, and then I couldn't go back to sleep because I'm laying there listening to this guy talk to me. So, <laughs> so I was like, no, he needs to be quiet. I need to go back to sleep. But I'll listen to the ones that are subliminal and you can just barely hear them in there. And those seem to help. I mean, that that seems to help me. Um, I like it. And I listen to different ones all the time. If nothing else, uh, if I think it's helpful, that's like part of the battle, right? Sure. What you think and believe is, is kind of where you, you drive yourself. Yeah, that's the start, right? So it, that's the beginning of action. And, and yeah. at the end of the day, we need to take some form of action. And, um, and so that's the initial action. The initial action is, is, I think this may be helpful. I'm going to try it. It's helpful. And so that is an action step. And so, you know, I think we get caught up in, in a, um, in an environment to where we want things just kind of given to us and, and quick fix. Yeah. We want a quick fix. And, um, and I always have to warn people when when we have, you know, uh, I do a number of different consults um, to see if my kind of practice is the right fit for my patient. And, and I'm always sure to tell them, I go, look, if instant gratification is your idea of, of health care, I'm probably not the right guy for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, but if you're willing to have a partner in health, and you're willing to, you know, listening, right? So listening is probably the greatest problem or barrier or limitation that I think people have in healthcare today. Um, Greed. Oh my I, gosh. I, you know, I'm your guy, right? I know. So. I mean, I mean, you're everybody's guy, but you're definitely my guy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a cool song back when we were growing up about my guy. <laughs> That's I'm right. not going to sing it. Yeah, don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> oh, it's my girl. Never mind. See, yeah, I'm okay. really off. No, there's a version. There's a my guy version. <laughs> you know, there's, there's both. There's definitely both. You know, one other thing I wanted to say that I've learned kind of the hard way is, um, you know, I try to give people grace. I always tell people I, I hand out forgiveness pretty easily because I'm only human and I know I'm going to mess up. So if I forgive you, I hope that when it comes time, you'll forgive me. But I realized, I don't know, a couple of years ago, maybe that I really didn't, I wasn't so good at giving myself grace. Yes. And so that's something that I've been working on in terms of trying to control the stress level is giving myself grace a little more often. Not, and that's not to say to just like allow myself a hall pass for, you know, bad behaviors or, you know, habits or whatever. But if I fall into something like if I hypothetically would have gone to Dairy Queen last night and got a medium sized blizzard and ate the whole thing in front of the TV, if I did something like that, <laughs> I would forgive myself. <laughs> yeah. So this is a one-time thing, and I probably wouldn't do it again tonight. <laughs> right, right. So if I did it, and I didn't, but if I did it, I would have gotten a large, and I would have eaten the whole thing. <laughs> and I would have been miserable the rest of the night. Um, you know, because I probably so would I, have been. Yeah. Miserable. So I eat. I eat a certain way, and I've eliminated a lot of things in my diet. So if I have a cheat then um, I, I pay for it. And, and so it's, it's interesting because um, I think this happens to people quite frequently when it comes to, to weight management and, and body perception and self-perception is they get, you know, I'm going to do the work, I'm going to join a gym, I'm going to diet, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And then they slip and fall. They pull mm -hmm. a muscle, they, you know, they get sore, something happens and it, causes a stumbling block yeah and then we end up beating ourselves up so much that yeah. we never get back to where we're going until we feel so bad again that we're willing to give it another shot and it becomes this vicious cycle 
And so I love, I love the word grace. Um, it, it resonates with me. I love it. I love it. I love it. I was literally talking to a, a patient, a couple patients ago earlier today, about the same time I go, so when are you going to forgive yourself? Yep. Right. And so, so many times I've found um, patients, people, they have such a hard time forgiving their self that the only way they think they can get to the next level is through medication and these kind of things. And so when they realize that not only are they forgiven, but they can forgive themselves, then they can literally take action to continue to grow in and look forward. It's okay to look back. Eh, I've yeah. been there. I've yeah. been there, but I want to go there. And so in order to go there, I can't go back there. So I look back, I learned, and, and so we deal with this. If you have children or friends or personally, and, and, and so it, it's, um, you know, sometimes we need accountability partners, right? And, mm -hmm. and to help us get a little kick in the tail, you know, get off your pity potty. You're forgiven, forgive yourself, move forward. The world's not going to end today, but it might. Maybe <laughs> we hope, <laughs> you know, an accountability partner. That's a great idea. Um, so I have an accountability partner in business um, that I absolutely positively love. She and I connected uh, during COVID since the, since the world has changed and uh, we meet via Zoom twice a week. Um, we don't live in the same area, but we have a lot of synergy, but we also are different in a lot of ways. And so we kind of push each other in because we, we both know what you know each other's goals are. And so we keep each other on track. And I hadn't even thought about that, but I have an accountability partner personally too. Um, hadn't thought about her in that manner before but certainly you know we kind of are you know one day she's off one day I'm off you know she's on I'm on whatever you know we bounce back and forth and heaven forbid should we both be you know down in the dumps on the same day and it's happened a few times but not often thankfully sure. um so having somebody you're absolutely right somebody who, who you feel safe with that you can you know talk to and and explain and you give yourself grace, establish some routines that work for you, get physical, move your body, exercise, whatever, um, feed yourself right. Those are all, they're all the things we know, right? Yeah, you know, and it's and so, and it makes me think it's like every time I go to the, you know, I went to the doctor and you guys have probably heard this a lot too. It's like every time I go, I hear the same thing every time. Um, eat right, get exercise, right? Yeah. And so, um, but, you know, is that, it, it's, uh, or you need to go on a diet and you need to exercise. So we do need to increase movement and, and we do need to nurture our body. And so, but we need help doing that. And, and just by left to our own devices, we're going to search social media for the quickest way to do it. We're going to Instagram and see what's working. We're going to Facebook and see what's working. We're going to go to Google and and go to Google and say, okay, what's the latest, you know, Mediterranean diet, Okinawan diet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're going to go yeah. to magic paleo. bullet. We're going to go, we're going to magic bullet. And so, I mean, I eat paleo in my house. Okay. Um, from the paleolithic age. And, and so it has a lot of autoimmune and anti-inflammatory properties. Um, I encourage a lot of my patients to, to try to go that way. I think, Again, it gets back to the whole simple, not easy concept. Um, right now, I'm reading a really cool book called Deep Nutrition, um, which leaves gets out of the genetic component of um, how our genes or DNA is affected from uh, you know our parents and our grandparents, and gets into the epigenetics. In other words, how do we feed our genes? or how we feed our genes actually plays a larger, a larger role in how we're responding to our environment, whether it's um, increasing risk for heart disease, cancer, 
uh, mental health disorders and these kind of things. So extremely interesting. It gets into the root cause of what's going on. You know, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, everybody wants a pill, you know, anxiety, everybody wants a pill. And you know what? Our gut is our second brain. We release a tremendous amount of neurotransmitters in our stomach. And so if we are putting the right things in our body, then we have a great opportunity for uh, increasing um, our body's response to what's going on in the environment for us. So, um, but it takes someone to spend some time doing it, right? And, 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 that's, the, and, and that's the big thing. So, uh, you know, find a provider that's willing to listen to you so you can, um, you know, come up with a, a customized plan to help you get well. And one yeah. that's affordable, of course. <laughs> Right. Absolutely. And baby steps. Baby steps are always a good thing. I know when Absolutely. I was younger, I wanted to do everything right now, you know, and I wanted results tomorrow. And, you know, as I've gotten older, I've gotten more patient. I understand, you know, Rome wasn't built in the day kind of thing. And um, so, you know, one thing at a time is okay. You know, start listening to meditation music or, or meditating or, you know, start taking a short walk every day and uh, just mindfully making changes. Of course, I'm saying that, you know, I'm preaching to myself here. I appreciate you talking to me about it, though. I mean, most of it is thing, are things that, you know, I knew, I knew that, but I was feeling really overwhelmed this morning, and um, it helps to have somebody to talk to about it. Sure. Even, it, even if I it's have, stuff you already knew. I have four accountability partners, right, and they range from the age. Really? I do. The oldest one's 84. The youngest one is in his early, is in his early thirties. And so, uh, you know, so many, they have lots of knowledge. They have lots of experience. Their wisdom varies. Um, their jobs are different. Their religious preferences. Um, so their spiritual journey is different. And, um, and so, uh, yeah, yeah. So I let them hold me accountable. It allows me to be a man at the same time. It allows me to be vulnerable. And, um, yeah. and for most part, I do pretty good. What gets me in trouble is when I go to them before going to my wife and then my wife really gets ticked off. Uh -oh. goes, Why didn't you talk to me first about that? And it's just like, because I really didn't know how to approach it. But, um, you know, I'm human and uh, yeah, take my lashings with a wet noodle. Communication, always number one. So, okay, so we're going to wrap up. Thank you for the wonderful talk as always. And um, are you offering any telemedicine for like, like I've had several people who live outside of Brevard County that are interested in communicating with you. Um, and, and I told them I would ask you if you have any sort of a telemedicine um, kind of setup where you could do just a, a, a occasional consult with somebody or is that something that you don't do? So, yeah, so I have, you know, I do virtual health. Um, okay. I call it virtual health versus telemedicine. Um, okay. And the reason why is because I think, it, you know, telemedicine is pretty much, if you have a sore throat, you have a UTI, you can call any telemedicine thing and you yeah. get a prescription. Um, and then if it goes over 15 minutes, they increase your price and cost stuff that, like that. Um, I do virtual health for my patients already. Um, I've been researching virtual health for 11 years, so that's kind of a, a no-brainer for me. But okay. yes, I have a platform, as you know, Spruce, right? So I can do video, photos, um, questionnaires, and, um, and so they can do a virtual membership if they're in the state of Florida. Uh, I, you wow. have to be licensed um, in that state to practice uh, health care, whether it's a nurse practitioner, PA, medical doctor, DO, chiropractor, you have you know, you have to be licensed in that state. So I can only do the state of Florida, but I okay. do have, I do have, my furthest patient is down in Homestead. Okay. So well, that's good to know. See, I didn't know that. I so, didn't know that. See, I learned no, something new. You know, I don't want, so there's a lot of value in the monthly membership in patients. Um, you know, they get 60, 70, 80, 90% discounts on labs and stuff like that. I can't do that with the, the virtual health. Um, because I can't physically meet them and those kind of things, but yeah. surely we can do a virtual health visit, um, you know, a one-timer, 
because of COVID. Probably when COVID kind of gets through, I don't know if I'm going to keep that aspect of it. And then to be honest, I've only had about four people call me. Um, and then there is a virtual health membership, and that's just for access for your routine um, primary care type stuff. Uh, but, you know, I have negotiated uh, a lot of value for my local community and not outside of community. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it's kind of, kind of tough to, to give them that, those benefits at that, that. So it's not, you know, you know, they get the benefits of me. Right. Right. Well, that's always a good thing. So, all right. Well, I will add your contact information to the description post. So if anybody wants to get in contact with you, they can. And, and it's shorter now. Island it is. BPC. So Island BPC. Direct instead primary of, care. Instead, yeah. instead of Island Direct Primary Care, which was such a long website mm -hmm. where my email was John at Island Direct Primary Care. Now it's John at Island DPC or www.islanddpc.com. Um, I own both domains, so they both work, but either way. So. Perfect. Good deal. Well, I'll see you Wednesday. I'll see you next Wednesday. And Sounds we'll be good. back here again. Um, I'm going to stop the live. Anybody who's watching or has watched or is coming to watch later, thank you for being here. And I didn't check, I did not check any of questions today. So I don't know if we had questions or not, but I will check later. And if we did, we'll roll them into next week's um, discussion. And we're getting there every week, we get a little bit better. So I awesome. like that about us. So Thank bye, everybody. You. Thank you for stopping in.